Hello, and welcome to our Bible study lesson for the week of November 5th, 2023. I'm your host, Minister Marshall Bell. I greet you in the immaculate, exalted, and holy name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Let us pray. Dear Master, right now, I would like to lift you up and praise your name. Because you are worthy to be praised. Dear Master, bless the words that I am about to speak to your people. Help someone to understand that they need you in their lives. And they need to come and ask, what do I need to be saved? What do I need to do to be saved? Dear Master, bless each home that's going to be represented here. One by one and those collectively. Bless all the people that are about to hear what I have to say. Bless each church that's open in your name. Bless my church family. Bless me, Lord. Help me to stand behind your cross. Hold me up to keep doing thy will in the way that you want me to do it. These and all other blessings I ask in thy loving son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. This Bible, les Bible study lesson that the Spirit of the Lord has laid on my heart. He laid it on my heart for a while. Our lesson keep, keep, kept popping up. Other lessons kept popping up. And I never got around to this one. But now is the time for me to do so. So I should tell you that I have been a preacher for 25 years. And I am attending Regent University to get my BA in biblical and theological studies. I basically study the Word of God each and every day. I use four differently worded Bibles to get a very good understanding of the Scriptures. And I often use what I have learned from my university studies in my Bible lessons and sermons. But still, you might need to ask yourself this question. How can he tell others the meaning of the scriptures if he does not know what they say? And even then, there is still a lot that I don't know. And if anyone tells you they do, they are lying. Because each time we read the Bible, the scriptures may have a totally different meaning to fit our circumstances. I am not a perfect person, just a sinner trying to stay right with the Lord. But no one is perfect. When it comes to the Word of God, we as Christians need to listen very closely to who is speaking and to what they are teaching. As you ask yourself, is this person being led by God to speak on his behalf? Were they called by man or chosen by the Lord to speak for him? Are they discerning the word of God correctly? Or are they adding words or leaving a few out that they don't like? The Lord said this himself in Matthew 22, 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. He said this because those few who are chosen by him have met all of his requirements and he personally handpicked them to serve him himself. What we will be looking at in this in today's lesson is I have entitled it many are called but few are chosen. The Lord tells us in Matthew 7, 15 through 20. Let's read that. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. 
every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruit, you will know them. Now let's look at these scriptures a little closer. We're going to go back and read uh, Matthew 7, 15. That says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. There are many false prophets or preachers today who pretend to be Christian guides, but whose real purpose is it's a satisfy, it's selfish and destructive. We must test those claiming to prophesy by their fruit, that is, by their lifestyle, character, teaching, and influence. There are too many TV evangelists and some mega church pastors who do not follow the teachings of the Word of God because most of them will only tell their congregation of people who follow them on TV words that will make them feel good. Totally staying away from the parts of the Bible that might upset their audience. But every word written in the Word of God was not written to make us feel good. Because at times, we each need correction, and the Bible knows just how to do that. It will convict us to have the right attitude and love for God if we allow it to. The Word of God does not always make us feel good because even if we do not want to hear it, the Lord may at times need to straighten us out. Just as parents correct their children, my master at times may need to do some correcting on us. Romans 10, 15 tells us, And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who brings glad tidings of good things. The gospel is universal in its application and demands a universal proclamation. I am not a pastor of any church. So I sometimes say what they can what they cannot. At times some of the words that I say in my sermons do hurt some folks' toes. But I do not speak from my own card. Because just as now I say what the Lord has told me to say. I totally follow his lead. Whenever anyone gets angry, because of something that I say, I really don't care. Understand that they are actually getting angry with the Lord and not me. Because he is the person who told me to say it. No one on this earth has a heaven or hell to put me in besides him. So I'm not going to hell because I did my own or anyone else's will. Instead, I do his will as I have been told by him. I do remember what happened to John. But some false teachers who stand as if they were one of the Lord's servants are telling you God are telling you God's truth. But in, are not oh let me rephrase that. But some false teachers who stand as if they were one of the Lord's servants are not telling you God's truth, but instead their own lie. Removing one word or adding one word to a scripture can change that passage of scripture into a total lie. A false interpretation of the scriptures can do much more harm to people than God's truth. False teachers such as these have totally changed God's salvation, which he gives to each of us freely into a money-making business for themselves. I also remember that the Lord whipped the money changers out of his father's house himself. <laughs> but these false teachers will ask you to send them money 
for their ministries. And then after you do so, they will be very happy to send you a prayer cloth, which may have cost them 99 cents at the five and dime. While others will send you a very small vial of holy water, a holy oil that has never been blessed by anyone. If you need blessed water, a blessed olive oil, bring it to me. I will be very happy to bless it for free. Listen, when preachers use the money that people send in their ministries to buy themselves homes larger than some hotels, when they use the money to buy themselves a suit more expensive than all the clothing in your entire closet, when they use the money to buy themselves four or five luxurious cars that you will never be able to afford, or even tell you they need your help to buy themselves an airplane so that they can get to their next camp meeting on time, and you are riding a commercial airline back in coach. You need to first try the spirit by the spirit before you give them one penny of your hard-earned money. And what about the poor? That's the two. And the sick who need our help. Most of these preachers act and sound a lot like a radio preacher who was around back in the 70s. Reverend Ike was his name. He would tell people over the airways how they could make themselves some money because he sure was not going to give them any of the money that had been given him. He'd say that on the airways. He'd tell you that. This money was sent to him from his ministry, but he only used it all for his personal betterment. I couldn't understand why people kept sending that man money. And he would say that. Philippians 4 and 9 tells us, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. This verse tells us that God will supply our need by a distinct and definite measure according to his riches. In declaring this, God makes clear that he is not stingy when it comes to his provisions. His riches encompasses all creation, so there is nothing you need that he cannot provide. We should not misquote or misread this verse. It does not say that God shall supply your needs. It says that he shall supply your need with no S on it. Need, N-E-E-D. That includes everything at once. And all of it is adequately covered because he does it according to his riches. Not by what false prophets, false teachers can swindle out of others. This verse cannot be lifted out of the Bible. It underwrites and relates to everything the scriptures tell us to do in order to prosper. If we do what the Bible tells us to do, then God will provide abundantly. Let me look at my time, make sure we're doing all right here. Okay. Matthew, uh, Please allow me to move on to Matthew 7 and 16. That reads, You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather group grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Here the Lord clearly and plainly tells us that we can detect them by the way they act and what they say. Just as we can identify a tree by its fruit. Well, do you know anything about plants or growing or gardening or not? Everyone should know that you don't pick grapes from 
thorn bushes of figs from thistles. When I first became a minister, I once followed the church that I was attending to visit another church where a husband and wife co-pastor. Right after my pastor finished preaching, everyone who needed prayer was asked to come up front so that the co-pastors could pray for them. And some of the people who attended that church were falling out after being touched by one of them. I was standing there, and the lady pastor turned and started praying for me. I didn't ask for prayer. Nevertheless, it was okay by me for her to do so. But that was a problem. She kept pushing on my forehead forcefully as if I was supposed to also fall out. Or she was trying to push me over. I'm not sure. But if I feel the spirit moving in me, I know that is him. I will not be a part of any mockery to make people believe that she had a power that the spirit of the Lord had not given to her. The Lord is not looking for anyone to try and show him up because he is the greatest show that has ever been or ever will be. He does not need anyone who is trying to entertain or act as if they are Christians. He only uses those who truly believe in him. He will only use those who will stand up boldly for him, not afraid to tell a sin-sick world of his grace and goodness so that we do not fall into the trap of false teachers. We should also do as 2 Timothy 2.15 tells us. That says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. How can you know if a teacher is not teaching you correctly if you don't know the word of God for yourself. In this scripture, Paul uses the metaphor of an unashamed workman, a clean vessel, a gentle servant to illustrate the Christian preacher. To live as Jesus did while he was here on earth, we each need to try very hard to live as God has told us to. This involves studying and applying the scriptures as the Lord meant them to be. Those who do so will become living reproofs to those who do not and thus will often encounter persecution. We should devote ourselves to re responsible Bible study. We should become sensible interpreters of the scriptures. Allow me to move on to verse 17 and 18. 17 and 18 says, Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. <coughs> Please allow me to put this in a in plain everyday English so that even a child can understand this message. Here the Lord is saying that true born again Christians will do whatever the Lord wants them to do. But those false teachers will do whatever they think they need to do to get ahead. The only thing that they can produce is something for themselves. Anyone who is being led by the Spirit of the Lord will not do anything to try and change my master's agenda of what they need to do for themselves. But on the other hand, if a person is faking Christianity through false teaching, they could lead those who would like to follow Christ down a path away from him. I talked about two 2 Timothy 2, 17 18, two weeks ago. But it is appropriate for me to say something about them once again. That reads, and their message was spread like cancer. Herminius and Philippus Philip, are of the sort who have stay, strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past and they 
overthrew the faith of some. Hominius and Philippians apparently taught that a spiritual rebirth was the only kind of resurrection that would occur. This was false teaching because we know as Christians that Christ's resurrection was not a spiritual rebirth, but instead he was physically resurrected to live forevermore. This false teaching was leading some away from their belief in Christ. This is the very same thing that some of today's false teachers are doing to so many. Jehovah Witness, Seventh-day Adventists, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindu, and other religions, not excluding many TV evangelists and some mega church pastors who say that they are say, serving the Lord or working very hard to turn God's creation created. Let me, let me re say that. Are working very hard to turn God's created beings, mankind, away from Christ. I watched a video last week about 30 of these TV evangelists who are doing this and are very proud of it. But we all need to look closely at what verse 19 says. Matthew 7, 19 says, Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Here my master tells us that every person who professes to be a teacher of the word of God and, 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 and intentionally does not teach his word correctly will not see the kingdom of heaven, but instead will be cast into a fiery hell. Since my master will be the only judge on the day of judgment, many of them will hear the words that the Lord spoke himself in Matthew 7, 21 through 23, which reads, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in the day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who are practice lawlessness. The Lord here warns each of us against self deception. A mere verbal profession of the Lordship without obedience to the will of God. It is even possible for self deluded persons to exercise a spectacular ministry such as weekly and sometimes daily TV shows and mega churches using the authority of the scriptures and of the name of Jesus without walking in genuine obedience the discipleship to him. The Lord motivates his disciples to live righteously by emphasizing that such living comes from the heart with love and in trust more than through observance of an external code of ethics. Consequently, New Testament wisdom reveals the difference between a correct behavior based on the law and righteous actions that proceed from the heart of a new life reborn in Christ. Be warned right now that what we practice demonstrates our relationship with Jesus. Never undervalue obedience. Know that many who expect divine approval will receive censor or even judgment instead. Moving on to our final verse, verse 20. Matthew 7 20 says, Let me check my time one more time. I know I'm getting close to the end. That's, that reads, Therefore, by their fruit, you will know them. <coughs> Here, once again, 
once again, the Lord tells us himself. The way to identify the tree or a person is by the kind of fruit that is produced. Their lifestyle, their character, their teaching, or their influence. My question for you is what type of fruit are you producing? Are you sitting at home waiting for your prayer cloth, holy water, or holy oil to arrive in the mail? Stop sending your hard-earned money to those people because they don't need it. They have more than enough. They have swindled enough people out of their money. Find the church that God has led you to and pay your tithes there. But I am so I am sorry. There will not be any prayer cloth, holy water, or holy oil included. In your tide, in your tide giving. In conclusion, listening, listen to them if you like. Because at times what they say does sound very good. But is what they are saying actually biblical? Can every word that they say be backed up by the word of God? There is nothing wrong with wearing nice clothes, living in a mansion, or even owning four or five nice cars. I have three cars of my own. But the problem is, how did they get them? Was everything a blessing from God, or was it swindled out of someone else? There is no need to do this, because as I have told you, the Lord will supply all I need. The Lord, my God, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, took care of all I need. When he went down to a kangaroo court and never said a mumbling word, he took care of all I need when he took that beating that we don't have to take. He took care of all I need when he took that whipping that we don't have to take either. He took care of all I need when they kicked him. He took care of all I need when they spit on him. He took care of all I need when they pulled the hair out his beard. He took care of all I need when they talked about him and degraded him. They took He took care of all I need when they Put a crown of thorns on my master's head. That was not enough. They marched my master up a hill called Delgada with a cross on his back. The cross was very heavy, but it wasn't heavy just because it was heavy of, of the wood. It was heavy because he had my sins, your sins, the past, present, and future sins to come on his back. He marched it. They marched him up that hill. He laid that cross down. They did not force my master to get on that cross. He got over there on himself and stretched his arms out wide for I need. He lowered his feet down low for I need. But when they put those nails in his hands and raised him up, he said, I'm going to do some drawing. He drew me. Please allow him to draw you. Do not let this word that I've been speaking to you come back in vain. They took my master down off the cross. They put him in a bar tomb. He didn't need it long. He just only laid there three days. But early, I'm talking about early on getting up resurrection Sunday morning, he took care of all I need because he walked out of that grave. Raised his hands to the sky and said, Power! All power in the heaven and earth are in my hands. He took care of our need. Do not let these mega church preachers deceive you. These TV evangelists, do not allow them to deceive you. Taking words out of my God's word is not going to help you. It is not what you need to hear. Feel good, make you feel good. 
But all the time, the words of the Lord are not for you to feel good. Sometimes you need your toes stepped on. Sometimes you need to be mad at the preacher. But whenever you're mad at the preacher, remember you mad at God because the preacher's only saying what God told him to say. If you have been listening to me, you understand what God has told me to tell you. And you're tired of the mess that you're going through. All the things that have happened. God took care of your need. And he will take care of them now. Pray with me right now. Dear Master, I'm a sinner. I've been listening to that preacher. I heard the words that he said. I've heard what he's been trying to convey to us. And I'm ready to give my life to you. I'm tired of going through what I'm going through. Please come to me right now and help me change what I cannot fix myself. Dear Master, put somebody in these people's lives that know you, that can lead them and guide them in the way they should go next. Thank you, Lord, for choosing me to speak on your behalf, to uplift you, to tell the world of your goodness and your blessings, how good you are and how much it is a privilege to serve you. Thank you, Lord, for choosing me to be the spokesman for you. These are all the blessings I ask in thy loving son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I am Minister Marshall Bell. My pastor is J. Moran. My church is Greater Peace Missionary Baptist Church, where we have a good time. Come by and visit us if you like. Listen to us live on YouTube. Uh, you can hear this recorded later. Our, sermon, uh, the, our service recorded later on YouTube. You can watch it later. Just as you can hear this Bible study lesson that I just presented. Uh, I've enjoyed this. I've been, like I said, God had led me to do this a long time ago, but I had never got around to it because he kept giving me other messages to tell you. But I'm so happy that he finally allowed me to say what I said today. Uh, but I have no idea what my master is going to want me to talk about next week. But as I always tell you, I will be here ready, willing, and able to tell you the word of the God, of the Lord. I appreciate you being here with me. I appreciate you listening to me. Come back next week, please, and be with me once again. But until then, I will say bye-bye.